Hey, it's Bobby B. I'm here with John Lloyd Young, uh, Tony Award winner, actor. Uh, you've seen him in Jersey Boys where he played Mr. Frankie Valley with an eye. How are you doing today, sir? I'm great. It's good to be in San Francisco. Okay, well, you're no stranger to San Francisco. Uh, what do you love most about the Bay Area? Well, you know, I was born in the shadow of the dome in Sacramento. So every time I come to Northern California, I'm, I feel like I'm learning about my own history. So I, I love San Francisco. It's just one of the best cities in the world. It's a fun place to play. The audiences are good here, but also because I'm kind of exploring my own history here. Speaking of San Francisco, you have two sold-out shows, Friday and Saturday, at Feinstein's here. And then Sunday, there are still tickets available for all your fans to come see you on stage at the Palace Fine Arts, at the Help Us on the Way Gala. Tell us how you got involved with that amazing organization. Back when I was starting my career in New York City, I was involved with, there's a big charity there called Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. And, it's, uh, and also it's connected with the Phyllis Newman's uh, Women's Health Initiative, which uh, supports women who are uh, going through breast cancer and other types of cancers. So I was very involved with that charity. And when I moved to LA in 2008 to, to do something at the Hollywood Bowl, and then I stayed in my home state, um, my, my manager was involved with AIDS Project Los Angeles, which is, has a very similar mission to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. I met David Galligan in L.A., who directs some shows there, benefits there, and he is directing this benefit here, and he brought me here, I think it was 2009 or 2010, to do uh, uh, this same gala a few years ago here, so he's my connection. It was really kind of the AIDS charities uh, of where I was living well, it sounds like an amazing show, and um, there's tickets available, guys, out there, and I would definitely check it out, given that these, these are sold out here this weekend. We definitely got to check them out on Sunday. Um, what does it mean to you to be appointed by President Barack Obama for the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities? Well, can you imagine? I can't. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm one of the younger, younger people on the committee. Everyone else there is like a major presence i mean there's like anna wintour as one of the members and like sarah jessica parker who i've been watching for her whole career and and then me but you know it's interesting because you know when the, when when you get an appointment and you're asked to do something so important and to represent the arts on a national level um you kind of have to rise to the occasion so it's interesting i look at things differently like i i I can't just uh, do any role where I'd be doing something that I wouldn't want the kids that I'm working with in schools that you know to to see that I did that. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to watch Sesame Street, and one of my favorite guys from Sesame Street was in a movie, and he had like a wrench, and he had grabbed like someone's stomach with the wrench and was like torturing them with it, and I was like, no, that's the guy from Sesame Street. So like I'm going into these schools working for the president with these little kids and. Um, I feel like a sense of responsibility to make sure that the things that I do are uh, as exquisite as possible. Right. You definitely got to step up your game if the president's watching, right? I'm sorry? You definitely got to step up your game if the president's watching you. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> with the president. <laughs> All right, no, no one does, guys. No one does. And speaking of art, speaking of art, uh, you have your website, johnlloydyoung.com, and uh, there's some art uh, creations of art on there that are um, inspired by food products. And we got inspired by being on your website, and we created a little something cool. Let me know what you think. You have to be honest here. Be honest. You have to be honest. Okay? Yeah, I'll be, I'm going to pull it out here. All right, here we go. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, Chef Boyardi. I haven't done any sort of Italian things yet. I just I did pizza. Oh, I did uh, Tony's spam? pizza. You've done spam, great. Right? Spam, is, bam, bam. Thank you, spam. You'll see it on his website. Also, we have we did this, guys, and he says it's great. I mean, hopefully the president's <laughs> watching. Uh, the president's watching. So you got to be honest too, right? Yeah, but you know, when you're making art for like it, like the art world, it can't have the actual food in it. So oh, geez, well, I'm, yeah. I lunch. I need to eat lunch today. So all right, so so you could actually open, but see that then you're also kind of messing with your right, art, right. your artwork. What do we do with it? Is it good enough to eat? Or is it good enough to put on the shelf? Both. Both. All right. The pantry. <laughs> I really, I appreciate, I appreciate the homage to the to the stuff I'm doing, which is really sparkly. 
Right. For it's sure. like it's like a, a rhinestone covered grocery store. My my <laughs> my my art studio looks like a grocery store it. covered with rhinestones. I love it. I love All it. Right. And you know, uh, Chef Boyardee actually helped out uh, the U.S. during the war times. I'm serious. There's a story about him. We'll check it out later, guys. So I know Mr. Obama knows the story. All right. Oh, and did you know spam? Spam, like yeah. potted meat, was right. created to feed soldiers in the war. Exactly. And then my grandfather was in World War II. He loved spam because that's that's what he ate when he was like in the war. Yeah. And Hawaii, they love it. They still eat it. They put it in eggs. Coco loco or coco moco. It's it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. I haven't been to Hawaii, but it's amazing. Okay, so we have something else here for you. We have something else. Um, Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. It's a uh, Wizard of Oz. Nobody's scared of the Wizard of Oz. It's here for the witch. Okay. okay so does this take you back any memories? You're, you're no stranger to the stage. Uh, does this bring back any memories? Were you ever doing any productions with the Wizard of Oz ever? One of the first things I ever did as a little kid was a production of the Wizard of Oz. And because, the, you know, they didn't have, like, really high-tech stage machinery, they, the way they made the witch melt was they had... The, I was the shortest kid in the whole <laughs> cast. I was six. And the way they made the witch melt was they had identically dressed witches different heights and hiding behind the different columns. And Dorothy was, was uh, chasing the witches around with, a, with a, a plant sprayer. And as she went around each column, a smaller witch came out, and I was the smallest one. Oh, and it, you, you played the smaller little witch part? Well, or, yeah. I mean, you a munchkin or something. That's not true then, huh? I had another part. Oh wow, an extra part! And did they even have flying monkeys? I mean, were those cast at all or no? It's funny because I did another production of The Wizard of Oz when I was a kid living in the Midwest, and I played a flying monkey in that one. So I, I had a lot of intersections with The Wizard of Oz. What's that all about? I don't know. We have it here, and it's still following you today. But I'll tell you what. Let's take this to Plattsburgh High School now. Okay, we're going to Plattsburgh High School. Where you went to high school? I think it's in the East Coast. And um, does this bring back any memories? I know it's black shoe polish. Oh, but you can tell us anything that has to do any stories with that shoe polish. Yeah, well, it was white shoe polish. Okay, white shoe polish. Because I played, I was, uh, I, I, I guess, I had some skill as an actor at sixteen. I was the only one in the whole school who was capable of playing someone older, and I played the father in Brighton Beach Memoirs. But because I was sixteen, I had to put white shoe polish in my temples so that I could look like a, a Jewish Mitt Romney. <laughs> Well, it's hard for us to find the white shoe polish, I guess. Maybe a lot of people, kids are out acting these days. I don't know. Anyways. Let's get forward to uh, Jersey Boys. Christopher Walken. It must be amazing working with him and uh, Clint Eastwood in the same film. Christopher Walken saying, um, can't take yeah. my eyes off you and Deer Hunter. But like when you guys were filming, did anybody bring that up at all? Or Yeah, well, I knew it. But Chris Walken's really cool. <laughs> He's like a cool as a cucumber. He's like a... A dude that you just like, you're just so excited to have him there and with you in the scene that you don't kind of, you're like, you don't make small talk. You let him make the small talk. But I'll tell you, he did something really generous and nice okay. with me. And uh, one day I was getting ready for a scene and I heard a knock on my trailer door and I opened the door and there's Chris Walken. And he says, I have a gift for you. And hands me a framed black and white picture of Frankie Valley sitting backstage with Frank Sinatra. Wow. I mean, and he just gave me this really meaningful gift. And I didn't really know what to make of him because he keeps to himself. Yeah. But he's really good, <laughs> really good guy. It was amazing to work with him. That's amazing to, for us to hear that story. I don't know if it's the first ones to hear it, but it's amazing. Either way, I didn't hear it. I'll tell you that right now. Um, let's go to the last thing in my bag. I'm going to pull out of the bag here. Uh, it's um, It's got over 200 great reviews on Amazon. It's uh, top five rated, the best perfect rating you can get on Amazon. Um, it's one of my favorites. It just came in the mail the other day. I listen, the mail the other day. I listened to it all the time. Uh, it's your CD, My Turn. That's right. right. Yeah. And, uh, I have to sign it. Have yeah, you definitely it. have to sign it. Definitely have to sign it. And then, um, yeah, for sure. And then, um, this goes in your pile. This is my pile. Oh, okay. this is oh yours. you're going to keep the boy RD. Oh, here, we go. here we go. All right. Well, it's got amazing, you know, in the still of the night. I love those other 60s classic songs, you know, with the jazz standard. It's, it's so amazing. Uh, you guys got to check it out at home as well and order it on Amazon for sure. It brings an emotion out of you. Just the songs that these days, some often they don't bring out that much motion as the ones in the 60s, you know. And uh, we just want to see more of your work. Uh, do you have any music projects in the future that you could let us know what you're doing? as well well we're it's funny here at feinstein's this weekend we're singing from this album but also new songs we're working on we're writing new songs and it's and what you're saying it's interesting that yeah a lot of music right now is about kind of moving around and having a feeling but a, a lot of those songs from the 60s are 
a, kind of tell a story and you get really into something like country music does that right. tells a story right, sure. these are soul songs from the 60s and and we're we're writing new songs that kind of come from the same tradition so that you, the audience who's listening goes through what the singer is going through and it's, and, and ex, it kind of explores that with them right. and and uh, and we're and we're testing them out here at fine oh my gosh and that's why it's a sold out crowd um you know what i know your character in jersey boys fell in love with a person that interviewed him now i'm gonna tell you right now that i'm not letting that happen okay i'm not gonna let that happen here yeah yeah but you know i'll take it but don't they say that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach <laughs> crack that open crack that open my friend so what are you doing you know <laughs> all right be careful <laughs> well thank, thanks a lot for joining us today and good luck on this weekend filled with the concerts Thanks, uh, and uh, nice to talk to you guys. And and I w I'm so surprised. I have never had an interview that has such an, an, an inventive bag of tricks. Oh yeah, it's, and there's more to come, folks, for you guys out there. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.